Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have summation over positive integer n of minus 1 to the n by gamma of n plus 1 half minus the natural logarithm of n. Let's start by rewriting the nth term as the sum of two terms. In one of them, n is replaced by 2n, and in the other, n is replaced by 2n minus 1. When n is replaced by 2n, this part is equal to 1. We get di gamma of 2n plus 1 half minus log 2n. When n is replaced by 2n minus 1, this is minus 1. We get di gamma of 2n minus 1 plus 1 half, which is di gamma of 2n minus 1 half minus log 2n minus 1. Rewrite the sum with index small n going from 1 to big N. Later, we will take the limit as big N tends to infinity. Split this sum into two sums. In one of them, we have the difference of the two digamma functions. In the other, we have log 2n minus 1 minus log 2n. This is summation, small n from 1 to big N, log 2n minus 1 over 2n. The sum of logarithms is the logarithm of the product, small n from 1 to big N, 2n minus 1 over 2n. The argument of this digamma function is 2n plus 1 half. Of that one, it's 2n minus 1 half. The difference is 1. Recall that the di gamma function is the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function. The gamma function satisfies that gamma of z plus 1 is equal to z gamma of z. If we take the logarithm of both sides, we get that log gamma of z plus 1 is equal to log gamma of z plus log z. Differentiating both sides with respect to z, we get that di gamma of z plus 1 is equal to di gamma of z plus 1 over z. This means that di gamma of 2n plus 1 half minus di gamma of 2n minus 1 half is equal to 1 over 2n minus 1 half, which can be written as 1 over 2 between brackets n minus 1 fourth. Investigate di gamma of n plus 3 fourth minus di gamma of 3 fourth. Using this property, this di gamma of n plus 3 fourth can be written as di gamma of n minus 1 plus 3 fourth plus 1 over this argument here. This di gamma function can be written as di gamma of n minus 2 plus 3 fourth plus 1 over this argument here. We keep doing this till we get di gamma of n minus n plus 3 fourth, which is di gamma of 3 fourth. It goes away with that term. We are left with summation g from 1 to big N, 1 over big N minus g plus 3 fourth. If we use the substitution small n equal to big N plus 1 minus g, then n minus g is replaced by small n minus 1. Small n minus 1 plus 3 fourth is a small n minus 1 fourth. Let's go back to this step. This difference is 1 over 2 times n minus 1 fourth. This means that this summation here is equal to 1 over 2 summation small n from 1 to big N, 1 over small n minus 1 fourth. And this summation is this difference here. Thus, this sum is 1 half times di gamma of big N plus 3 over 4 minus di gamma of 3 fourth. What about this term? 2 is multiplied by itself big N times. We get 1 over 2 to the power big N. When the product is applied to small n, we get the factorial of big N. In the numerator, we have the product 1 times 3 times 5, all the way to 2n minus 1. We can multiply numerator and denominator by 2 times 4 times 6 times 2n minus 2 times 2n. When we do this, we get 2n factorial in the numerator. These extra terms are equal to 2 to the power n times n factorial. This product here is equal to 2n factorial divided by the square of 2 to the power n times n factorial. If we stop the sum of interest at big N, we are able to evaluate this sum and write it down in terms of the di gamma function and factorials. To obtain the value of interest, we need to take the limit of this quantity as big N tends to infinity. This term does not depend on big N. This is di gamma of 3 fourth. We can obtain its value by applying Gauss di gamma theorem, which was proved in a previous video. It allows us to evaluate the di gamma function when its argument is a rational number. Using the formula, we obtain that di gamma of 3 over 4 is minus a small gamma, Euler Mascaroni constant, minus log 8, which is minus 3 log 2. We have two other terms. In this one, we have cosine 3 by over 2, which is 0. We also have cotangent 3 by over 4, which is minus 1. Multiplied by minus pi over 2, we get plus pi over 2. To deal with the factorials, we apply Stirling's approximation. We know that the limit as big M tends to infinity of M factorial divided by square root 2 pi M, M to the M, E to the minus M is equal to 1. When we take the limits, 
we can use this approximation for the factorial. This logarithm is equal to minus n log 4 minus 2 log n factorial plus log 2 n factorial. n factorial is replaced by square root 2 pi n n to the n e to the minus n. 2 n factorial is replaced by square root 2 pi 2 n 2 n to the power 2 n e to the minus 2 n. We apply the logarithm and simplify. Asymptotically, this logarithm is minus one half log pi minus one half log n. The last term to handle is di gamma of n plus three fourth. We can use this previous result that log x minus one over two x minus di gamma of x is strictly positive and is upper bounded by the minimum of one over two x and one over 12 x squared. The minimum itself can be upper bounded by either term. Let's upper bound by one over two x. So we have these three sides, zero, log x minus one over two x minus di gamma of x and one over two x add one over two x to all sides. We get that one over two x is less than log x minus di gamma of x, which is less than one over x. We multiply by minus one, reversing the inequalities. Then we add log x to all sides to get that di gamma of x is upper bounded by log x minus one over two x and is lower bounded by log x minus one over x. The sum of interest is equal to these constants, and then we have this limit here. The quantity we are taking the limit of is one half di gamma of n plus three fourth minus one half log n. Note that from this inequality, we have one half di gamma of n plus three over four, upper bounded by one half log n plus three over four minus one over four n plus three over four. The lower bound is one half log n plus three over four minus one over two between brackets n plus three over four. If we take the upper bound and subtract minus half log n, we get one half log n plus three fourth over n minus one over four between brackets n plus three fourth. As n tends to infinity, this tends to zero. The argument of the logarithm tends to one, so the logarithm tends to zero. We get the exact same limit zero using the lower bound. This means that this limit is equal to zero. The sum of interest is a small gamma over 2 plus 3 log 2 over 2 minus pi over 4 minus log pi over 2.